At first glance, this MySpace page looks like one belonging to a typical teenager. She likes hot guys and hip hop. But scroll down. This is her memorial page. This girl just wrote, I really wish I could have had a chance to meet you. I wanted to meet the beautiful and smart girl that everyone talks about. I hope you're resting easy, baby girl. This has about 90,000 views. Megan Meyer was 13 when she took her own life over a year ago. In September of 2006, Megan was just shy of her 14th birthday when what seemed to be a budding online relationship with a boy calling himself Josh Evans ended badly. <laughs> What's going on there? My daughter just hung herself. Hey, calm down. What is going on there? My daughter just hung herself. Okay. The tragedy was compounded when it was learned that the cyber friendship that drove her to hang herself had been a hoax. Other kids posing as a fictitious boy. The sense of outrage deepened when one of the young participants in the hoax came forward. She told us she had information that it was Lori Drew who created this MySpace account along with her 18-year-old employee and her daughter. Lori Drew was not another preteen, but the mother of a girl who lived down the street. One person involved claims that Lori Drew asked her to create an account for the kids. Who do you blame? Obviously, I blame the Drews. I blame them because they absolutely created the false account to completely trick my daughter. Despite the tragic end of Megan's life, no criminal charges were brought against anyone by the state of Missouri. The internet is a young medium, and there were no laws on the book set up to address a case like this. How did that make you feel? How could it be possible that no laws were broken here? It's pathetic that we, as a society, do not have laws to protect our children. In an unlikely twist, the U.S. Attorney's Office in Los Angeles started its own investigation of Lori Drew. But the alleged victim is not who you would think. It's MySpace, based in Beverly Hills. The prosecutor has decided to try a new tactic in this case, gambling on a charge he thinks may stick, wire fraud. Lori Levinson knows just how difficult it can be to prosecute such a controversial case. She spent several years in that same office. In this situation, the prosecutors are searching around. We want to find her guilty of something. What can we get, even if it's a stretch? Prosecutors may claim Lori Drew defrauded MySpace by helping set up a bogus profile on their website posing as a minor and targeted at another minor, Megan Meyer. An act that her family believes set off the chain of events that inexplicably led to the death of Megan Meyer. Describe for me what kind of young girl Megan was. Megan was, you know, a goofy girl. Megan just giggled a lot. She was a class clown. This goofy girl, however, had battle bouts of depression since the third grade, telling her mother she wanted to commit suicide and cutting her arms. Like many young girls, she struggled with her self-esteem and desire to fit in. In seventh grade is when Megan had a really, really tough year. That was the year that Megan was really, truly just trying to fit in, and she just couldn't figure it out. And it's a tough year for a lot of children. In the beginning of her eighth grade year, one boy seemed to appear on Megan's MySpace account out of nowhere. How did Megan's online interaction with Josh Evans begin? She had a new friend request and she looked at it and it was a picture of a really good looking boy and said he wanted to be friends with her. And Megan looked at me and she's like, oh my gosh, mom, he is so hot. And I said, do you know who he is? And she's like, no. And I said, well, you know, then I don't think you should add him. Megan's persistence paid off. Tina Meyer reluctantly allowed her to accept Josh Evans as a friend. What did some of the emails say? They were instant messages and it was, you know, gosh, you're, you know, you're so cute or your eyes are beautiful, that type of stuff. But from the beginning, Tina Meyer sensed that there was something off about Josh Evans. I was very open with her and I said, you know, Megan, we don't know who this person is. This could be, you know, a 40-year-old pervert. This could be the 16-year-old person or it could be a 20-year-old person. We don't have a clue who this person is. Again, remember, people can be anybody that they say they want to be on the computer. Unfortunately, her mother's intuition was right, though she never imagined that Josh Evans was a fake cyber character allegedly concocted by neighbors just four homes away. Lori and Kurt Drew had been a part of the Myers' life for years. Their daughter was the same age as Megan, 
and the two girls have been friends since elementary school. There was a lot of ups and downs with the friendship during that seventh grade year. One day that they would be friends, one day they wouldn't be friends. And I constantly battled with Lori Drew. Their friendship eventually ended, and prosecutors may claim that Lori Drew, her daughter, and an 18-year-old family friend worked together to create this fictitious boyfriend for Megan. The alleged motive? To find out if Megan was saying mean things about the Drew's daughter. When did the emails get negative? When did they get nasty? The very first negative email of any kind came on Sunday, October 15th. I'm going to read this. Is that the email that says, I don't want to be friends with you anymore because you're not nice to your friends? Right. A confused Megan wrote back, but she didn't get a response. On October 16th, she went to school and handed out invitations to her 14th birthday party. She'd already picked out the polka dot dress she was going to wear. At 3.20, Megan returned home and rushed to the computer to see if Josh Evans had responded to her MySpace message. Then she opens up the other message, and the message says, You heard me. I said you're not a nice person, and I don't want to be friends with you any longer. It was typically back and forth, you know, who are you talking to? Who's telling you that I'm mean? At 5 o'clock, Tina Meyer returned home from an appointment and found her daughter distraught. What began as Megan's attempt to understand why Josh Evans no longer wanted to be her friend had devolved into a barrage of insults with other kids joining in. All of Josh's friends, all of Megan's friends, calling Megan a whore, a fat ass, calling her all kinds of god-awful names. And I had said, Megan, you know what? I am really disappointed with the words and the language that you're using. Now, what's her reaction to all this? How is she feeling? She was crying, and she said, you know, you're supposed to be my mom. You're supposed to be on my side. Megan took off running up the stairs. 20 minutes later, Tina Meyer got a horrible feeling in her stomach. I hadn't heard anything, nothing. My heart dropped, and I just took off up the stairs. And I opened her door, and I just saw her hanging in her closet. That night, the Myers tried to contact Josh Evans, but as quickly as he had come into her life, he had vanished. What we saw were the last two messages sent from Josh Evans, which were, the world would be a better place without you and have a sh the rest of your life. Lori Drew's attorney says she didn't have anything to do with setting up this account. Did Lori Drew set up or help create a fictitious website in the name of Josh Evans to monitor Megan Meyer? She did not. Did she instruct anyone to do so? She did not. So she didn't send any emails? She did not send any emails. All Lori Drew did was be aware that they were doing this. Correct. Many of the viewers are going to be asking themselves, how could an adult, a mother, exercise such poor judgment and let this happen, knowingly let this happen? Well, I think um, her judgment was probably clouded by a mother's concern for her daughter. I mean, things were being said about her, and so she didn't think in a million years what happened would happen. That's, I think, why she didn't put a stop to it. This novel criminal case could also present many challenges for the prosecution and problems for others who may have defrauded MySpace. The huge issue in this case is, is the federal government all of a sudden going to step in with a wire fraud statute and charge everybody who's making misrepresentations on the Internet? That would be an awful lot of people. Even if Lori Drew is ultimately charged, she would probably face little time behind bars if convicted. And it wouldn't bring back Megan Meyer. All of her dreams, <laughs> you know, her birthday, she was supposed to get her braces off that day. After all of those years, her black and white polka dot dress that she was going to wear, she wore it to her funeral.